Hey everyone, Christina Simmons here. Just with a reminder that if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that that way you get uh, notifications uh, anytime that I go live on the YouTube channel. And if you're listening to this podcast, then make sure to be subscribing in whatever platform that you're listening with. So without further ado, let's jump into our food for the head, heart, hands, and feet. And this week, because it happens to coincide with the great feast of All Hallows' Eve and All Saints' Day and All Souls' Day, I wanted to focus upon saints and sinners and how it is that that all comes together and how that's a part of God's plan. So our first food for the head actually comes from Soren Kierkegaard. He was a very famous philosopher, and he wrote, God creates out of nothing. Wonderful, you say. Yes, to be sure, but he does what is still more wonderful. He makes saints out of sinners. How true this is. And I think sometimes we almost take it for granted, uh, especially for those of us who've been baptized, who are striving to try and live that life of holiness. I think we do take this for granted a bit. The fact that God is able to make us who are sinners make us saints. Because even though we are doing the work, you know, we have to show up for prayer. We have to be, you know, being uh, close, especially uh, to his grace and the sacraments, um, going to confession, receiving Eucharist frequently. We have to be doing these things, striving to grow in virtue. The fact is, is that it's God's grace at work in us. And that's what's transforming us. And if you remember, this is what holiness is. Holiness is all about transforming union with God. But lots of times we take it for granted. And Soren Kierkegaard points this out beautifully by saying, God creates out of nothing. And we're like, yeah, God created everything. But then we forget the fact that he's creating saints out of sinners. All of us are sinners. I'm a sinner, no, no doubt about this. Um, just in the fact of, you know, God tells us in scripture, my thoughts are not your thoughts and how true that is. I know that he doesn't walk around judging people. I know that he doesn't get upset or, you know, feel resentful that he's having to do things that he might not want to do. Um, the, these are all things that I deal with all the time. And I know that those are things that are below God. But, but he takes all of my stuff and he helps transform it into what will make me a saint if I strive to be in union with him. Beautiful phrase for us to keep in mind always is, Lord, Help me want what you want. Lord, help me want what you want. This is the struggle of daily life. To want what the Lord wants instead of what I want. And what do I want? Well, I, I want people that are going to be responsible and they're going to do their part and they're going to think about others and I'm not going to have to clean up after their messes. And this can go for anybody, including kids, I mean, spouses, whatever. Okay. But I'm, I'm being a little playful, but I'm also being spot on is that all of us have this little running kind of uh, dialogue that's going on in our heads of where we're judging people. And if you don't struggle with that, praise God for it, because I do. Even when I don't, I'm sitting and I'm critiquing and I'm going, well, they should have done this, or it could have been done that way, or, you know, and, and it's, it, it really is a cross sometimes because I don't want to think badly of people and I don't think badly of them but, you know, it, and this is my pride, okay, 
of where I'm going, well, you know, you, you could do it this way and it would be much easier. And so in other words, seeing my way as the best way. And this is why that, that small little prayer that I, I shared, Lord, help me want what you want is so important. But this is how God makes us sinners into saints. So maybe you struggle not with judgment. Maybe you struggle with, um, uh, may, maybe it's uh, thinking uh, that you're not worthy or you're not loved, or maybe you look at someone else and you're envious of how they look or uh, the things that they have in their lives or the job that they have or the family or the, you know, all these different things. Whatever we struggle with, God is using exactly that to make us into saints. It's the exact things that we struggle with that he is using to transform us into saints. And how does he do that? Through transforming union with him. Lord, help me want what you want. This is the key. So therefore, don't take for granted what it is that God is doing. Soren Kierkegaard reminds us, God creates out of nothing, but even more wonderful is that He's making us saints. He's making us sinners his saints. Our food for the heart. So this is one that comes from Oscar Wilde, but he co-opted it. He made it the positive form from St. Augustine. So I'm going to use St. Augustine's and then I'll share Oscar Wilde. So St. Augustine says, there is no saint without a past, and no sinner without a future. Oscar Wilde took it and said, every saint has a past, and every sinner has a future. So he kind of put it in the positive. But what I like that Oscar, you know, added on was the saint and the sinner are just exchanging notes. The saint and the sinner are just exchanging notes because every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. What do you mean by that? For me, what I and what I when I read that, the saint and the sinner are just exchanging notes is the fact of the reality that we there's this fine line between us being a sinner and us being a saint. And it's this fine line that permits the fact that every saint has a past and every sinner has a future um, and every saint does have a past. There's no saint that doesn't have a past. St. Augustine was so perfect to write that line because of his past, because of his background. I mean, if you look at his, what he did and how he lived his life, until he had that encounter with Christ, oh my gosh, definitely gives me hope. He, you know, I mean, he pursued everything but God. Definitely had pride of life going on, of where he was convinced that reason was enough and that he didn't need God. He was good to go. He, he, he didn't need him. Reason was fine. And he pursued the things of the world, uh, he had a relationship with a woman which produced a child, a son, um, and eventually um, it was something of where he came to realize that it was not right for him to be living with her and not, you know, be bound, you know, in marriage and, um, you know, and, and eventually he tried to rectify, you know, the, the relationship with his son and his son. It, it was a good it was a good relationship in the end, but his son died of, of a disease, and that was something that uh, Saint Augustine always kind of regretted was just the fact of how it was that he had been a father or not been a father is more accurate. So somebody who truly had a past, and yet we call him Saint Augustine. Why? Because Christ gave him a future. So why is this food for the heart? 
because the saint in the center exchanging notes, as Oscar Wilde refers to, this is what goes on in our heart. You know, uh, all of us have seen, you know, or may, most of us have probably seen Pinocchio or at least some version of it, you know, of, you know, Jiminy Cricket, you know, your conscience, you know, talking to you or, you know, the, the angel and the devil, you know, on our separate shoulders and they're, you know, trying to convince us. And this is what it is for us to live our daily life. What we try to do is that we try to listen to our angel and by the way, we do have a guardian angel who will help us and will guide us and protect us if we invite them into our day and into all of our activities. And then we do have a devil. I mean, they're, they are assigned to us, uh, not by God, um, but uh, Satan wants to try and take us away from God. So he sends his, his minions, he sends his, his devils, um, you know, in his demons in order to, uh, bring us, you know, out of relationship with God. So we're always in this tension. How do we get rid of that tension? How do we overcome that tension? Through prayer, through time with our Lord. When we are able to sit and to be with God and allow God to imbue us with all of his knowledge, his wisdom, all of his graces, which we can receive through the sacraments, and then also, especially when we spend time with his word, you know, the rosary is a beautiful way to do this as well, but spending time in daily meditation. When we meditate on God's word, through Lexio Divina, when we meditate on the mysteries of Christ's life through the rosary or the truths of the church or on the lives of the saints, this is why we look to the saints. Then what happens is, is that then the saint and the sinner might be exchanging notes, but the fact is, is that the saint receives a note from the sinner and tells the sinner, no, we, we, we don't need to go back down that road. Or the sinner receives a note from the saint saying, you're better than this. Make this choice. So when we allow God in our, in our angels, our guardian angel in particular, but the angels in order to assist us and help us, and we look to the saints, then we know without a fact that we have a past, but we especially have a future. Our food for the hands. <laughs> From C.S. Lewis. <clears throat> we are all fallen creatures and all very hard to live with. How true this is. I don't think we have to go looking far at all to know that we're all fallen creatures and we're very hard to live with. But the fact is, is that we try to be the best that we can. We try to be the best that we can. Um, there's a great quote, and I, I had pulled it. Uh, Diana uh, Peterfront, she wrote this. No one is innocent in the tide of history. Everyone has kings and slaves in his past. Everyone has saints and sinners. We're not to blame for the actions of our ancestors. We can only try to be the best we can, no matter what our heritage, to strive for a better future for all. This is particularly important when we take into consideration what C.S. Lewis said. We're all foreign, fallen creatures and all very hard to live with. We can only try to be the best that we can, do the best that we can, say the best things that we can in the moments with God's grace. So if we are trying to, Lord, help me want what you want. So if we're trying to want what God wants and we, we're not taking for granted his grace and then we are bearing in mind the fact that we are a sinner but God is transforming us into saints and we keep our eyes on that in hope, then when we are striving to do our best, then we are trying to be in union with all. 
And this is what the beauty of the communion of saints is all about. The communion of saints is we are all connected. This is an idea that has been around, um, you know, specifically has been written down. Uh, references to the communion of saints, and, and especially in Catholic belief, is goes all the way back to the 4th century. In fact, the term appears in the Apostles' Creed. And, you know, um, so what's important is that you know, it's not just about those who are baptized. You know, this is how, you know, we become holy is through baptism and through the Eucharist and our unity as one body of Christ. But the fact is, is that we are called into sanctity. This call of holiness is for everybody. And in fact, in uh, Hebrews, uh, St. Paul writes um, at the very beginning, I think it's chapter 12, um, he writes about, you know, being surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses um, that, you know, let's run the race um, and uh, be able to set aside anything that is holding us back, you know, every sin, any, anything that is weighing us down so that um, the great cloud of witnesses is able to cheer us on. So this idea of, you know, like coming into a stadium, so I'm getting ready to do a marathon and, um, you know, one of the things in, at the end is that they bring us into an arena and that's where, you know, spectators can be and, and they're able to, and we run around the arena as we're getting ready to finish. And this is what I envision, you know, is going to be like in heaven is that here comes Christina. You know, this is what I'm praying for. Here comes Christina. Look at her life look at the good that she has done in union with christ look at how many people are with her or she has brought here you know to celebrate at the eternal banquet feast and you know and to be calling out those names so like on november 1st on all saints day the the first reading is about that multitude that that of of uncountable people of every race and creed and language and you know and they're all there and that's where we get to see how our life made a difference that's how we get to see that it was all worth it and this is what we're striving for um so even when we're encountering all the fallen creatures, ourselves and others, and we're all very hard to live with, we strive to be the best that we can. We strive to be patient. We strive to be gentle. We strive to be, you know, um, at peace with one another. We strive to be good. You know, we, we strive to do these things, to be virtuous people so that we can live in union with all the fallen creatures around us, including ourselves. So the communion of saints, we celebrate on All Saints Day, we celebrate the reality that there's all the saints that we know of, those that we, we name that are part of the canon of saints, and then all those saints that we don't know. Uh, Jeff Cavan has just had a, uh, as part of a reflection, a daily reflection for on the gospel of the day, he talked about Bob the plumber and the fact of all of the good that Bob the plumber did. And this is who we celebrate all the Bob's, the plumbers or Andrea, the artists, or, you know, uh, it, it, there, there's just so many people that are face to face with God right now. And these are the people that we celebrate on All Saints Day, even, you know, especially the unknown named ones. All Hallows Eve is for us of where it's this tension, you know, that I was just talking about, you know, that Oscar Wilde referred to about saints and sinners exchanging notes. And All Hallows Eve is about we have a choice to make. We need to either choose to be a saint or we choose other. And then how does All Souls Day come into play? Well, because we need to pray for one another. We're united with each other. And All Souls Day is all about offering up the church that is suffering in purgatory, offering up our sacrifices, the church militant, those who are, those of us who are still alive. 
we offer up our sacrifices, all of our intercessions to help those who are in purgatory be able to join the church, church triumphant in heaven. And then together we are the body of Christ. This is what makes up the entire church. It's absolutely beautiful. It doesn't matter where we are. We're able to help someone in purgatory or uh, those who are already saints. They're able to intercede for us. There's a reason why we have patron saints. It's not just for us to have a model and example, but we're calling upon their aid. Just like when we pray the rosary um, and we ask Mary to help us. This is, you know, this is how we're all connected. It's absolutely beautiful. I absolutely love it. You know, so this is this is why I talk about saints and sinners, you know, oh my, uh, you know, but it, it's a it's a beautiful, beautiful um, teaching that we have in the church. And it's one that has been around for centuries. Why? Because God speaks about it. Christ speaks about it. He speaks about the holy ones. He speaks about those you know, Paul talked about to all the saints in Christ Jesus, you know, he began his letters, you know, this way. Um, you know, saints aren't just canonized saints, but rather they're all those who are in union with God and have been transformed from sinners into saints. So as we're thinking about that, as we're going through this process of transformation, we're all very hard to live with, aren't we? So today, what can you do to be able to strive to be the best you can, regardless of what your heritage has been, so that we can strive together for a better future? Our food for the feet comes from Robert Louis Stevenson. And he wrote, saints are sinners who kept on going. And this is very similar to another uh, quote that I refer to people um, about many times, which is the difference between a saint and a sinner is the fact that the sinner kept getting up. So here, Robert Louis Stevenson, similar, saints are sinners who kept on going. The whole key to the life of holiness that we've been invited into is to persevere. Don't think that because you're a sinner, which we all are, that that means you don't have a chance. Not true. God can overcome anything. God creates out of nothing. Remember Soren Kierkegaard? God creates out of nothing. What? How could your sin, regardless of what your sin might be, how could that prevent God from being able to make you a saint? If you say yes, this is why I keep coming back. This is why my, my apostle, it's all about say yes, say yes to holiness. We have to be willing. We have to give our free will. We have to say, Lord, help me want what you want. Yes, I desire to be a saint. Yes, I desire to be a part of the body of Christ. Yes, I want to spend heaven my heaven time in heaven doing good on earth just like saint therese of lisieux said just before she died i want to do that because i want everybody to be in heaven not because it's a great place to hang out but because we'll all be together in this world right now that is so divided in which there's so much division there's so much discouragement. There's so much deceit. Ah, oh, distrust. I mean, there, there's so much that we can look around the world and we can get very discouraged very quickly. But is there a better thing to be working for and striving for, keep on going for, than this vision of us all being united? of there being peace and unity and goodness and truth and beauty in his fullness uniting us together. Is there anything better? I don't think so. But the fact is, is that we are all called to be part 
of this communion of saints. Regardless of if we're a part of the church militant right now, which if you're living and breathing, this is where you are. Whether or not you are appealing to and in asking the intercession of the saints or those who have gone before you or are face to face with God or we're praying for all the faithful departed or those not so faithfully departed. We're praying for all those souls who are in purgatory that they too can be with Christ, united in him, and that we can all be together someday around the great heavenly banquet table for all eternity. I can't think of anything better, but we can't get there if we don't keep going. <laughs>